Welcome to the Stinnett Minute. I am at-large council member Kevin Stinnett and today we're starting a special four-part series about workforce development here in Lexington and today I'm at the Building Institute of Central Kentucky to tell you about the workforce development efforts going on out here at this school. With me today I have a very special guest first time on the show Mr. Todd Johnson. Todd come on in here and welcome. Thank you Kevin appreciate you being here today. Well thank you for having me again we're at the Building Institute of Central Kentucky. Now Todd give us the background of the Institute and how it was founded. You're with the Home Builders, yep. uh, president of the Home Builders, so tell us the background of how we're here today. That's right, I'm with the Home Builders Association of Lexington, and as we all know, we had a little bit of a housing downturn a few years ago, about seven of the worst years we've seen in the housing industry. Uh, not the first recession we've seen in the housing industry, but definitely the deepest and the longest. And uh, past recessions, when the slowdown occurred, most of our subcontractor companies were able to keep enough going to keep their companies alive. This one was so long and so deep that a lot of our subcontractors actually just left the market. They had to find other jobs uh, to keep their families going and, and keep their livelihood up. So what we've ended up with is a huge shortage in our uh, industry, the construction industry, for a, a big loss of skilled trade people. So our members with the Home Builders Association, uh, which comprise of building uh, home builders, home remodelers, uh, handyman services, a lot of subcontractors. Uh, we got together and said, you know, we've got to do something about this to address our workforce needs. We've got to do something more than we've been doing as an industry to promote what a good career opportunity there is for young people who want to get into uh, construction. So about uh, maybe 18 months ago, we started formulating the idea. Uh, we were on a fast track to get this school up and going. We started classes last September with two trades that we offer here. Uh, we're standing here in our carpentry lab now, and of course next door, I'm sure we'll show some pictures of that later, uh, we've got an HVAC lab where we're uh, training individuals uh, to become licensed uh, in HVAC and skilled in carpentry. So this was in a response directly into a shortage of carpentry skilled workers in our community as well as the HVAC component in our community and so the home builders joined together and, and opened this new school. Now who funds the new school? Is it 100% funded by the home builders? 100% funded by the Home Builders Association of Lexington and our member companies. Wow that, that's impressive and you know, this is a big niche in our community that I know a lot of people want to see filled sure. and uh, there's no secret that our jobs here in Lexington. 84% of our revenue at city government comes from jobs and if we're not developing our workforce and filling those jobs our city suffers. That's right. So thank you all for doing that. We're I glad appreciate to do that. that. Now you, you said you started last September. Mm -hmm. School's out for the summer now? It is. I understand? Okay. We are uh, getting ready to go through some renovations here. We're going to be adding uh, three new programs starting this September. So we'll have our year one students coming back as year two students. We'll have brand new year one students coming in for carpentry and HVAC. And we're also going to be starting uh, plumbing, which is a licensed okay. trade as yeah. well, uh, electrical, and facilities maintenance uh, in the fall. So we're gearing up and getting ready to do some renovations here in our building to accommodate those new laboratories that will be needed in classrooms. So you're already expanding even after the first year. Yes. Now are, are you finding that our students, are they coming from our public school system? Are they coming from the high school level into the program or, or is this geared towards adults as well? Where do we get our students from? All of the above. Uh, right now most of our students have come in that are just a year or so out of high school. Uh, we, we, with our school, we modeled it on a program that's been going on in Central Kentucky since the 1960s, about 40 some years. Uh, what they're seeing in their market and how they have grown, about 40% of their students are coming from the industry. So okay. a plumber will hire a, an apprentice to come on. They'll put them in the school to accelerate their time to licensure. Uh, and they have about 60% that are coming right out of, out of high school. Uh, right now, the majority of our students are coming right out of high school. Uh, Bruce Maybrier, who we'll meet in just a few minutes, is our Director of Professional Development for the school. Uh, he's done a great job over the last couple of years working with not only Fayette County Schools, but all throughout Central Kentucky in recruiting students to come here. So it sounds like the response has been very positive within the school system itself because I think that's a lot of times not every child in our community is geared towards that college education and this is an opportunity for them to further their careers but make a good living for their right. families going forward and not have to go to college. Right. The schools have been generally very well receptive to us coming in and talking to their students. Um, 
you know, I think what is missing in our school system, if I can just a little bit, is the fact that I don't think that people understand what a good living and a good career you can have in construction without going to college. If you're looking at college, I have, I have a son in college, one getting ready to go to college. Maybe one of them will be back here after college to go through a trades program. We, we've talked about that within our own family. Uh, but coming in is, and getting a skilled trade is a, a very good way to launch yourself for a career for your family. We're, we've, got, we've been very lucky. Well, our biggest problem is we don't have enough students to fill the jobs that we have available for them right now. 100% of our HVAC students are working in the field. Uh, every student in our carpentry program is working in the carpentry field who wants a job in carpentry right now. We have two or three students that are working other jobs but are wanting to get into carpentry later on. So you're already expanding your, your programs. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough students for those programs, so we're looking for more students out there. What would you say to the ideal student if they want to come and apply that are watching at home tonight? I would say to any student, potential students that might be watching, family members of students that might be watching, uh, you, you really need to check us out. Uh, if you're not going to be college bound, if you're trying to figure out what it is that you're doing, if you've been to college and, and you, you've wound up without finding that perfect career that you thought you would have after sure. a four-year degree, this is still a great way to launch a career for you. Uh, we are very approachable. Bruce will sit down and we'll interview you, uh, talk to you about the pros and cons of our school, uh, talk about how going through our school accelerates your, your time period in being able to become licensed in the state of Kentucky for HVAC and plumbing, for example. Well, the home builder sounds like they've done a great thing here by establishing this school. I think it fills a huge niche in our community, mm -hmm. and you're already expanding after your first year. That, that's great news. Tell me after that, after this next expansion, what's the future hold? Is there five years, ten years down the road? Where, what do you hope to finally look like? I think in uh, five to ten years we'll be operating somewhere between six and eight skilled trades programs. Uh, probably somewhere around anywhere from 140 to 160 students enrolled at any one time. Uh, from the knowledge that we have, we, we think that, that graduating uh, students out of our programs at a rate of about 15 to 20 students per trade is, is very much a, a rate that can be absorbed in our market. You have to think that, okay, in the state of Kentucky, for example, your average HVAC uh, company owner is almost 60 years old. Yeah, makes sense. Same thing next, for plumbing. Next generation. Same thing for electric. So there's a there's going to be a huge need in our in our industry for a long time for people coming in. It's a great opportunity to be your own uh, owner of your own business as well in these in these trade areas. Well, it's out there's so many uh, things that this school is actually teaching a young person not just the trade, mm -hmm. but how to run a business, and that's important for all of our community. Right. Well, Todd, thank you for being with us today, getting us getting this started, and being a value partner in our community because we couldn't do it without you. And I I look forward to hearing more about the school when we talk to Bruce. Great. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Next on our show, again, we're at the Building Institute of Central Kentucky. I'd like to welcome its director, Bruce Maybrier. Bruce, welcome Thank to our show. Glad to be here. Thank now, you now we heard how the school was created and, and the reasons mm -hmm. behind it, the creation of the school for, the, for our community and for our students. Tell us a little bit about your students and how many you had in your first year and, and what, what type of curriculum do they actually go through? We started with 12 students in the carpentry and just over 18 in HVAC, so we actually broke HVAC into two classrooms. Okay. Because part of the success of this program is small ratio. We want a ratio tight between the instructor and the number of students. Uh, the max we'll ever have is 18, okay. so it's very hands-on. Small classrooms. Uh, the classroom, our, our, our classroom is normally divided 50-50. Half the time will be spent in the classroom and the other half will be in a lab like this. So the students will learn what kind of nail to use, what kind of hammer to use, but more importantly, they'll come out and put the hammer to the nail because that's what they want on the job workforce. They want a kid ready to build okay. HVAC. They want a kid ready to, to start working, making the money for the, the company. Okay, so t if I'm a pr prospective student at home tonight watching, mm -hmm. tell us exactly what, what my day looks like when I come to, come to school. Is it Monday through Friday? Is it Your day will look like this. You come to our school at 6 o'clock sharp, not 6.01, 6 o'clock sharp. You've got to have the number of hours in the classroom to meet state requirements, particularly for the licensed trade. So it's a nighttime program? Nighttime program, and it will end at 9 o'clock. During the daytime, you will be working for one of our members. Now, we're not a job placement service. I want to make sure the students know that. We have 100% placement but I can't guarantee a job for the students. I can guarantee an interview, but it's up to the student to land the job. But we'll help them prepare for the techniques for interview. 
Okay, so the semester is how many weeks? Semester is 13 weeks. We normally start the first week of September. We take a week off in October, okay. a week off at Thanksgiving, and then we end before Christmas. School starts back up the first or second week of January, and we are out before April 15th, which happens to be opening day turkey season. There we go. How many days a week do they meet? Two nights a week. Two nights a week, 6 p.m. to? 6, six to 9. 6 to 9. Mm -hmm. So they're meeting for, for those. How long is the full course? Uh, it depends on the trade. Okay. All the trades are currently two years except for electrical and the state requires that to be four years. Okay, so do the students get paid while they're going through the school? All the students that work are, are working for money and they average around ten dollars an hour. But that's between them and the company to negotiate. The more valuable you are to the company, obviously, the more money you earn. The quicker you learn, the more productive you are, there's opportunity for advancement. But this is an earn as you learn program and it is a true apprenticeship. All the licensed trades will okay. be fired with the Department of Labor as an apprenticeship so that they are good to go when they leave here. And how do you find the companies that they work with or, or how do you find the companies that are inter interested in the student at the end of the program? Do they come to you all or do you all pick the companies out in our community? Currently I'm aggressively calling our members first okay. and letting the members know, hey I've got a Jim Dandy here. Uh, you probably want to interview him. Uh, we've already got kids signed up for this coming September who are already working. After mid-September to early October, if I have any kids left over, then I start calling non-members, Craigslist, whatever it takes to get the kids a job. Because I need these kids working. They've got to have the OJT or on-the-job sure. hours in order to get their license. But it sounds like you had success so far getting those businesses to we've participate had, in the program. We've been very successful. And then this is the first year, so the students that entered last September, they will have another year and then they'll be graduating? Yes. With the HVAC kids, when they graduate in April, all of them will have enough OJT and classroom hours that in April they could, they could sit for and should pass their journeyman's license. And at which point, they're no longer making the 10 to $15 an hour, but they're taking the, the salary that a normal journey would make. That's what I was going to ask you next. How in-depth is the teaching and the knowledge that they leave here with? Is it basic skills trade, or do you actually go through <coughs> a, the A to Z of carpentry? We, go through, the, we go through the A to Z. These students here have put in a window. The instructor we sent out to Anderson window in Minnesota to learn how to do it the proper way, which it turned out he knew anyways. Uh, they've learned how to put up siding on the back sides, aluminum siding, they put up doors, they'll do drywall. They will have the skill set and the understanding to do the work, but I wouldn't consider them lead quality. I wouldn't okay. say, here's, go build my $400,000 house. But under the proper lead, they would know exactly what to do. You can't replace just OJT. I understand completely because you know the schools like this are not all around Lexington so right. this is a very unique experience right. but at the same time they're still that on the job training need for, for all the students. The licensed trades which would be electrical, HVAC and plumbing the state says they are knowledgeable enough to go out and actually do the install themselves. And do you help them get their license before they leave school? They, the last day of school and they receive the certificate from us the very next day they can sit for their license. The moment they take the license, they graduate on our program. Okay, so we're adding new programs next year. Todd yes. mentioned a little earlier in our show. Yes. Tell us about the three new programs and what those curriculums will look like. The three new programs are electrical, which is a four-year, plumbing, which will be two-year, and facilities maintenance. And for the layperson, you can kind of think of this as a handyman on steroids. <laughs> so okay. he should, this person or she should be able to go into a house and fix any of the nagging problems we all have in our house. But then it could also go into light commercial or other things and fix a little further up. Uh, we'll give them the basic skill set to troubleshoot HVAC systems. John Q probably doesn't know how to do that. Sure. We give them the skill set to replace basic plumbing fixtures. Um, a normal person may not have that skill set. But even with that, they, they still have limitations because they're not licensed in that specific so, field. So they're all two-year programs except, except for electrical. electrical. State so, mandates four. Okay, so it's a state mandate. Yes. I was going to ask you, so is yeah. this, is this a, a accredited school? We're is not there? accredited, Okay, but we are approved with the state for electrical, Okay, uh, not electrical yet, for plumbing, HVAC, and we will shortly be with, with the uh, electrical. Okay, so I asked Todd earlier about the future of the school. Tell us what your vision is for, for the students. What do you hope to accomplish as director uh, for these students and the men and women that come through the school? And you have women, right? We do. We have two females currently, yeah. and I just got a phone call today. I'm interviewing a young female who wants to go into plumbing, and I'm interviewing her tomorrow at 3.30. That's great. That's great for The two community. females we currently have are Roberta and Kathy. Hi. And both are in the medical field currently. One has her PhD and one has her master's. 
and they're getting ready to retire and they're finally going to pursue their passion and they're both in carpentry. That's very good. Yes. That's very good. Yes. So uh, as we wrap up, Bruce, anything you want to tell? Can you get the, the information again on how we apply for the school if you're a pr prospective student? This is important. You interview with me, and the first thing we're going to do is drug test you. So moms and dads know this. There are no crackheads or dope dealers or anything else in the school. We are drug-free. We randomly drug test you out. you got good kids with your kids. So where do I go apply? Who do I call? Tell me that. Call me. You want my telephone yes, number? Yes. Tell, tell I'm going to give you my cell phone number. Don't call me too late because I go to bed early. It's 855. 859-229-6641. 859-229-6641. And can I go online and apply for the school? No, call me. Call directly. Yes, I want to talk to you. And I can come meet your parents or meet whoever you need to. We can meet at school, we can meet corporate, I can meet there. If you're buying, we can meet at McDonald's. <laughs> Bruce, thank you, sir. Thanks, thank you have a great program it. operating here. Appreciate you being on our show. Yes, sir. And that concludes today's segment and our first edition of Workforce Development. I am Council Member Kevin Stinnett, and you've been watching the Stinnett Minute. Thank you for watching. Thank you.